Notion automations are here. I've been waiting for this day ever since Notion bought Automate.io. First, the bad oh. news. This latest update still doesn't include the ability to connect your Notion to your Google Calendar account. But it still adds a lot of functionality to your Notion workspace. Here's how Notion database automations work and the best four use cases that you should start implementing today. Getting started with the new database automations is super simple. To add one, you can either just hover over your database and you will see this new uh, flash icon here, or you can also click on the three dots and that will also show you now an automations option in the sidebar. Now, when you create a new automation, the first thing that you can do is you can name it, right? So uh, we can say our first automation and then we, oops, automation, and then you can add a trigger and an action. Now your automations can have one or several triggers and one or several actions. And in terms of the triggers, there are basically two types that we have. Either a new page is added to the database or we make changes to any of our properties, right? We can say any property or we can say only for a specific property. And if you combine them, right, you could say page added and we want another trigger for change to any property. Uh, it will be any of these things, right? So you can't right now have cumulative changes. Of course, with page added and property added, that doesn't make sense. But right, for example, if you were to remove this and say, okay, we want uh, specific um, changes to, right, like say, let's have a, we have a name added and we have um, a due date added to something specific, uh, then it would make sense to also have, hopefully in the future, an end trigger. For now, it's either or. One thing to note, pretty much any way in which you could add a page to Notion database counts as a trigger for the database automations. If you manually add a page, if you use an automation, or if you use Notion buttons. But one thing that doesn't count is the recurring template, right? So if you've set up a recurring template, that won't trigger the automation for now. Now, for property changes, Notion has two types of triggers. First, the, just a general change to a property, right? So you can specify the property, but then any change will trigger it. Or for certain properties, you can uh, pick, okay, only trigger it if it changes to a specific thing. And that's the case for select, multi-select, and the status property. The any change to property trigger is a lot less useful because you can't really control right when it triggers exactly, but I hope in the future we get more granular control over this as well. Now, after you pick the trigger, it's time to select your actions. And the actions that we have available are four. We can add a page to a database. So if I click on here, I can either select uh, this database or another database. I can then edit pages in. This works very similar to buttons, right? So if I say edit pages in, we get the uh, option to uh, pick a database and then we can set a filter, right? So uh, by default, it will edit all entries in that database. So be careful, but then you can uh, add a filter, right? Like just with the normal filter rules to uh, specify, okay, only edit very specific pages if I do this. Let's remove this again and look at the other actions. We have also sent Slack notifications. That one already existed previously, but we now have more granular controls over it. And then lastly, we can edit properties in this database. So uh, this means we added uh, a property for the thing that just triggered the automation. Remember, in our triggers, we will either have a new page added or a property added on any page. And then the action here with like the edit property would mean, okay, whatever triggered it here, now we can change it. Let me just show it to you, right? So if, let's say we say, okay, we have a page uh, is added to this database and as the action, I want to edit a property and I want to say, let's set a name to uh, success, exclamation mark, done. I can click on create. And now I can create a new entry here and I can just not put anything and wait for a second for it to fill it out. And there we have it, our success message. Let's do a second one just to show you uh, what I mean. Let's say we have our status here not started, right? So let's create another uh, automation. So let's say uh, our trigger this time, we want a property edited. And as you can see, either it's any property or for uh, most of them, there's no granular controls, right? It's just a change. But for status, I can then go in and say, okay, not any option. I want you to only do this if I switch something to in progress. And then as my action, what I want to do is I want an add uh, a page to another database here. And for the name, we just say uh, new entry, something like that. Okay, let's create this and then click out of it. And now if I switch the status to uh, in progress, uh, after a few seconds, we should get our new entry here, new entry, perfect. And as opposed to if I set it to done, nothing will happen because that has not been registered here, right? That's not a trigger. It's only if I set something to uh, in progress, right? So I set it back to in progress and we wait again for a second. And there we have it, another new entry. Overall, Notion's new database automations are super exciting, but mostly for their potential. Don't get me wrong, 
you can already do pretty cool things with them, right? And I'm going to show you four cool use cases in a few seconds, but there are still a lot of features lacking that would take them from pretty nice to have to absolutely mind-blowing. What we mostly need is access to better variables, the ability to trigger them via recurring templates, so that way we can kind of schedule them, and a better integration for formula properties. So how can you access the new Notion database automations? Super simple, they will be rolled out automatically, so if you don't see it in your workspace yet, you should see it in the next few days. One thing to note, only paid users, so users on paid plans will be able to fully uh, use all features. So if you're on a free plan, what you can do is you can still use automations that other people created, right? So if you download a template from the Notion gallery and that has automations, you can fully use them, but you can't edit, change, or add your own automations. Before we get to the best use cases, a quick shout out to this week's sponsor, Gamma. Gamma is kind of an AI generator for presentations, but it's also so much more. With just one line of text, you can start to create pretty much anything, a doc, a presentation, or a simple web page. It's like your personal design sidekick that will help you turn your ideas into stunning visuals. Most importantly, everything is fully editable. After AI helped you jumpstart the process, you can go in and control literally everything. Just like in Notion, everything is a block and you can add new ones, modify their content or move them freely around. Just as one example, when I asked it to create a quick pitch for Notion, the app, this is what it came up with. And again, there was only one line, please give me a pitch deck for Notion. And that's pretty awesome. I don't even know how it got like the correct images. Maybe it browses the, the internet, but I was able then to uh, add a new blog, right? And embed my uh, video and we get an overview of Notion. We get features and functionality. We have how to use Notion, integration with other apps, real life use cases, pricing plans and options, right? And again, everything of this is fully uh, editable. So I can add a blank card. I could also ask it to write one with AI, but I could just add something and I add a layout, right? And I can say, okay, I want this. I want specific things in here and I can then from the side add a bunch of things right text formatting I can have like these embed blocks so again you create your presentation with AI as a starting point you can quickly change the layout uh, if you want something else you can uh, add cards and just super quick and highly customizable uh, experience here's the best way to describe gamma it's as if notion and canva had a child and that child learned how to use ChatGPT and midjourney to create stunning AI stuff Honestly, it's been a while since I got this excited about a new app. They also have a super generous free plan, so go to matthiasfrank.de slash trygamma and check it out yourself. Oh, and I also recorded a separate video that you also find on an address where I walk you th exactly through how to create a Notion-styled presentation in Gamma for some really pretty slides. So let's talk about use cases. First up, automatically assigning people based on the status. This is one of my favorite use cases, in particular, if you work in a team, right? If you work in a team or with freelancers and you have sort of a process where different steps of uh, process are done by different people, you should definitely implement this. So as an example, right, let's say I have a new YouTube video and whenever I have a YouTube video, I have a team of people and I have someone who will write my script, right? Uh, should be at the top. I have someone who will write my script. I have someone who will film the video and then someone who will edit the video. And in the past, I would have to then manually assign it to people, right, whenever it's their job to do it. But thanks to automations and thanks to the fact that we already have a granular trigger here, I can just say, okay, whenever the status changes to this thing, please assign it to that person. So, right, we go in our automations, we create a new automation, and we call this um, maybe uh, responsible. And our trigger will be that the status is changed to um, edit video. That's when we want to create uh, assign it to our editor, right? So you will have to create several automations, one for each step where you assign it to a new person. So edit video and then do this. Please uh, assign, make the assigned to me, click on done and on create. And now whenever I switch this to edit video, it will automatically get assigned to my editor. Of course, you can't just do this only with YouTube videos. You can also do it in a lot of other situations. For example, if you have a CRM, right, and you track the status of certain leads, you could use the status property to assign it to different salespeople on the team. Or instead of a status uh, property with, you know, this linear progression, what you could also do is take a select property and maybe, you know, have different industries and maybe you have different people inside your company who are responsible for different industries or you have writers who are responsible for different topics. And then simply by, you know, selecting that topic or the industry, you could then assign it to the correct person. Really, really powerful automations. Again, definitely recommend you try this one out. Next up, 
sending Slack notifications. This is a feature Notion actually had released previously, but now we have more granular control over it. It's a native integration with Slack and it's super cool to just increase the communication and you know celebrate certain milestones. For example, we could say whenever we have a task that is done, we wanna celebrate it in Slack, or on the other hand, right, whenever we create a new big project, land a new client, we want also to announce that in Slack. To do so again, we click on our trusted automation thing, we set up a new automation. This time it will be, let's say, when something is done, right? So we do any changes to done. Now, careful, this is any changes. We can't have it, if you have it over the checkbox, right? We can't say, okay, only if it's checked. We could do it with the status for uh, when it's done, but let's do it with uh, over this one for now. And then our action uh, would be send Slack notification to. And then we can pick uh, the channel. So let's say to the channel, uh, general one, and then we can click on create. Now, unfortunately, right now we can't customize the message. This is one of the shortfalls, right? I would love to have variables here or the option to at least specify the message. Not possible yet, but still better than nothing. So I can click on done. And then if we have a hover, uh, head over to Slack in a few seconds, we'll see here the celebration appear. And there we have our notifications from Notion that uh, something in here was changed to the status and the date. Again, would really love to uh, change the text, right, and message that comes through here, because if you have a lot of them, it's not the uh, easiest to grab the, uh, grasp the mo most important information, but again, really good step in the right direction. Number three, automatically triggering standardized processes or add like a bulk of standard tasks. Now, if you manage your projects in Notion, then you're gonna love this. Before, at the very beginning, if you used Notion for this and you had any sort of recurring projects, right? So projects who would have the same uh, number of steps or like similar uh, steps every single time, that was a pain, right? So for example, you had a YouTube video and there are like 10 steps to produce it. You would need to create these 10 tasks every single time manually or use a fairly complex workaround to make it happen automatically. Same, right? If you have a client and you onboard him and you always go through like 10 different steps in the onboarding, yeah, not ideal. Now, thanks to Notion buttons, it's already fairly easy to do this now. You can just create a button and you can click it and it creates, you know, this list of tasks. But with database automations, it's even easier. Basically, what we want to do is whenever we add a project to our projects database, we want to create certain tasks in our task database to, you know, have these standard tasks created here. And to do so, we can click on the automation button, right? We say new automation. And then as a trigger, we say, well, whenever a page is added. Now, um, or if you want to have it more granular, right? If you don't want it for all types of projects, but only for certain projects, what you could do is you could say, instead of page edit, you could uh, do um, the thing where you say, okay, whenever you have um, your status is, or like the type is set to a specific type. And then you want to do this as the action. You then want to say, okay, please, add a page to this other database. And then you can start filling out the names, right? So the first task could be, okay, um, let's say it's YouTube video, right? So we want need to write the script. And then we have um, another task where we say add page to, again, database uh, here. The next one would be um, write script, like film video and so on and so on. Now, important for all of them, we would also need to edit another property. We would need to edit the project, right? We want to automatically assign the project to this database. Now, at the time of filming, I actually don't have access to the variable here yet. Uh, the Notion team has ensured me that once it releases, or at least shortly after, we have the option here to uh, not just pick existing pages, but also like in buttons, you know, dynamically um, add it to page created. So let's hope that is there because that's what it relies on. But again, should be out either with the update or shortly after, and then you can create these recurring, um, unlike these recurring projects and automatically add certain tasks to them. And number four, it's now much easier to automatically add today's date whenever you create a new entry. Now, this is a small but pretty mighty change. Before that, the issue that you had, right, whenever you wanted to create a new entry and you automatically want to fill out today's date, you needed a slightly hidden workaround. Let me, let me show you that one first and then how you can fix it now. So let's say you have, for example, a habit tracker and every day you create a new entry or a journal. Again, every day you need to create a, uh, you create a new entry and you want to automatically have the current date filled out. Now, what you would usually do, right, is you would go in, you would create a new database template and you would say something like add today. And if you type add today, you get the option to say date when duplicated. So not today, but whenever this template is applied. But the problem is inside due date, you don't get that option, right? You can just pick a fixed date. Now, the old workaround was to turn this <laughs> into um, a text property and then type in here, add today, date when duplicated, and then turn it back into a date property. 
that looks very complicated and it also uh, appears like it's not working right. This says empty, but actually if I now go out of this and I apply a new thing, right? And I say, okay, please here apply the today template. You will see due date is filled with today's date. So that works, but it's a bit cumbersome. And now with database automations, we don't need it anymore. Instead, what we can do is we can simply say, okay, a new automation and please, whenever we have um, a new page added, right? What I want you to do is I want you to edit a property and I want you to edit the date property and I want you to set either to now, that gives me the exact timestamp, right? Or to today. And then we can click on create. And now if I create uh, any new entry, it will first fill out the success here. And then it will also, because it's the old automation, right? And it will fill out today's date. So we don't need the more complex workaround anymore. Overall, I'm really excited to see Notion introduce native automations into the app, even though there's still a few crucial features missing. Right now, Notion buttons offer even more powerful workflows. So if you don't use them yet, you should definitely give them a try. I recently recorded a video with 12 awesome use cases for Notion buttons that offer a real upgrade to your workspace. So just click here and I'll see you in a few seconds.